claim that screen time is literally making men soft. Chinese scientists found that playing computer games for a prolonged period can drastically increase someone's likelihood of experiencing erectile dysfunction, per a study published in the journal Andrology. The present study offered substantial evidence for a positive causal association between computer use and the risk of erectile dysfunction. <laughs> this whole spiel about the alleged link between chilling on the computer and erectile dysfunction practically reeks of sensationalism and all but dances on the edges of scientific credibility. And this coming from the CCP, who was cracking down on gaming because they saw it as a threat. Them? These people? Jesus, if people can't see this for the propaganda that it is, then you're freaking lost. But let's remove that from out of the mess for a second. The specification of leisure time or gaming on the computer as a potential villain in the grand narrative of health and well-being ventures into the realm of ludicrous, a total head-scratching moment that provokes both mirth and mild indignation. It's like we've accidentally clicked into a parody where complex human behavior is boiled down to this laughably simple cause and effect. Human screen time is literally making men soft. Blaming computer use, but remember specifically as it pertains to fun and leisure time, as a major factor in something as complex as erectile dysfunction, it's... You're, you're oversimplifying it to a ridiculous and laughable degree. You're making a joke out of serious research or the act of actually researching. Take a pause and just think about this for a moment. The world is filled with a crazy range of lifestyles. I know people who play computer games who are also skater boys, football players, policemen, government workers, homeland security like my uncle, food delivery drivers, retail workers, sanitary workers, teachers, and the list goes on and on. On an individual level, each and any one of these people conduct themselves differently in terms of their lifestyle. All the way from smoking and drinking to exercising six hours a day in the gym to be completely sedentary. No, no though, it's solely the computer. It's only time you spend on the computer that's supposedly bringing on the apocalypse. And not just spending time on the computer, but um, leisure time on the computer. You know, based on the title of the article, it would seem as though they just conveniently gloss over sedentary lifestyle, stress, diet, genetics, all those things that actually play a role in ED, and instead they choose to zero in on gaming or browsing as the villain. Anybody reading this would think it's so stupid. It's kind of like blaming the spoon for weight gain while ignoring what you're eating. You see why we no longer take these things seriously? It's hilarious how they pick and choose. <laughs> on what screen time is bad, which we still don't even know what that means. Computer use is out to get us, but endless TV binging or phone scrolling, is that fine? It's like they're saying, watch out for those specific pixels. They're the ones that are gonna get you and make your dick flaccid. It's just, it's just strange. It's giving cult religious vibes. Narrowing the blame to gaming computer fun doesn't just miss the whole point. It kind of seems like they're unfairly targeting the gaming community in addition to a whole demographic, i.e. men. Singling out this kind of screen time as the bad guy kind of misses the point and it's dodging the bigger, more important conversations that we should be having about how we live our lives, our health, how we balance our love for tech and stay active and hanging out in real life instead of acting like computers or specifically PC gaming is some kind of curse. Maybe we should be figuring out how to blend our tech obsession with getting enough exercise and face-to-face -face social time instead of just boiling it all down to gaming on the computers is bad because trust me, bro. And then they had the nerve to say at the bottom, like they're kind of whispering about needing more research, practically mumbling, don't quote us on this. Maybe, maybe you should lead with this. And the focus on computer use specifically while giving a free pass to other couch potato behaviors is wild. It's, it's got that, it's got that width of, width of agenda, you know, like some hobbies are more suspect than others because we don't like it or it's not currently trendy, or we want a way to stick it to them even more. It's like they're performing this magic trick and they're trying to keep us fixated on the hand that's waving around, how magicians try to make you focus on the hand. So you're looking at this while their hand is in their other pocket, you know, fondling the invisible dick that they have up their ass. I don't know, it just, it kind of feels like this study is, they're using it as ammo in this ongoing drama with gaming. And this article was published on March 20th, 24. So they were still amongst the people, I'm sure, that were aware of what was going on with Sweet Baby Inc. and other consultant companies and people coming out against gamers. And regardless of all that, let's just say that's not even a part of the conversation. Using these shaky findings to bash gaming, because that's kind of what you're doing, that's, it's not just unhelpful 
people, it's playing dirty. And they know that. It's very low. It's like they want to make gaming culture or just computer use or people who use computers the main problem. You know, blaming it for everything that's wrong under the sun with proof that it's so weak that it'd fall apart if you breathe on it too hard. But let's take a look at some of what they say in the article specifically. And this is why you can't trust articles like this or even certain studies too that it's reporting on. Scientists arrived at this hard truth. I know they think they were being slick with that, but cringe. By exploring the causal association between leisure, sedentary behavior, and erectile dysfunction per the study. To gauge if there was a link, researchers observed 223,805 men aged 40 to 69 as they engaged in various leisure activities, including watching TV, computer use, and even driving for pleasure. They then measured participants' levels of testosterone and other sex hormones, as well as feelings of depression and anxiety. Okay, so let me get this straight. <laughs> so, the study was done specifically in middle-aged and old men. Wow, what is, what? What even is this article? So firstly, the study focuses on men, ages 40 to 69, right? A demographic that naturally begins to experience a higher incidence of erectile dysfunction due to aging, regardless of their leisure activities. By this age, changes in testosterone levels, blood flow, and other physiological factors contribute significantly to the risk of developing that condition. So it is very misleading to single out computer gaming and leisurely computer gaming as a potential cause without robust evidence that directly links it to increased rates of ED in this age group, especially when these changes are a normal part of any aging dude. And there's also a thing that says less than 2% of men with erect ex erection problems reported their first symptoms started before the age of 40. Only 4% reported symptoms of ED starting between 40 and 49 years of age. About one in four said their ED symptoms started between the ages of 50 to 59. It also said that two in five men reported their symptoms started between the age of 60 and 69. And this is a normal part of older men. That just happens. And maybe I'm being stupid. Don't, don't quote me on this. But it almost feels like your testosterone would be at the lowest levels when you're actually relaxing. If you're pumping iron and stuff and being competitive, I feel like that's the time your testosterone levels would probably be a little bit higher, maybe. I know there's a lot of other factors at play there, but call me crazy, but I just don't think that someone's testosterone is gonna be spiking when they're just sitting and relaxing. <laughs> the article continues by saying, scientists found for every additional 1.2 hours of leisure time in the computer, of which type they didn't specify, the participants more than triple their likelihood of experiencing ED. And the article even points out, interestingly, the scientists didn't obtain any evidence to suggest that watching television or leisure driving didn't have the same effect, suggesting that being sedentary wasn't the problem in and of itself. Then they go into the follicle stimulating hormone and they do call out that the study has caveats, notably the fact that they only evaluated men under 70, the age at which ED is most prevalent. Also, the intensity of the symptoms was also unclear. Therefore, it could only be concluded that the longer the time spent using a computer, the more likely ED was to occur. But the risk of developing a specific type of ED and how or how severe ED would be could not be determined. Researchers determined that more research is needed before they can establish a definitive causal association between computer use and impotence. The study also neglected to specify what type of leisurely computer use up the chances of ED, which currently affects around 30 million men in the US you can see it down here. So, okay, my question is, um, then why even write that headline? Playing computer games can increase risk of erectile dysfunction. What, why did they even do this article? Why did they even perpetuate this? And what about women? Will our tits just drop off or our crotch lifts fall away or close up if we spend too much time on the computer playing video games? The article, or rather the uh, study, and I say that with quotations, with its mix and mash of issues, selective facts, and half-cooked conclusions, feels less like serious research. 
and like someone is ranting. It feels like this came from the mind of some pearl clutcher that just wants another way to control people or they're like offended that their partner is playing too many video games. Freaking op-ed masquerading as science penned by someone who is blaming the keyboard and the computer and gaming for all of their issues. It feels like projection. I mean, there are so many facets of life that can contribute to that. One of them, as they mention, being specifically the age of the dudes that you're researching. It's so obvious that these so-called scientists or researchers, if they even exist, if this is even true, they're being so selective in their findings. And and I, I hate saying this, but it's so ludicrous to the point where it almost feels, I'm almost 90% sure, it's so that they can spin some sort of alternate agenda. And honestly, like I said before, given how China has behaved in terms of cracking down on games and their viewpoint that it makes men soft, because you know, God forbid men enjoy something in their free time when they're not working their asses off or putting their lives on the line. Yeah, I'm less inclined to believe this. It's so important that when people read headlines or YouTube titles of videos, they don't just form an opinion just immediately based off of just that, that very little string of out of context statement. To wrap this up, please let this function as a wake up call for critical thinking. Like, just please don't just gulp down every headline as gospel. Let's not be lured by the flashy lights of sensationalism. Let's try to navigate the ocean of media yeah, just fully aware that the icebergs are lurking underneath all of the hype and the lies ready to sink the ships of your reason. Also, always bear this in mind whenever you are observing situations like this. And it is a notion that people do not like have people to have nice things. They don't like seeing people enjoy things, especially when a specific demographic or a specific culture, i.e. gamers or the gaming sphere, have a lot of pull or have a lot of power or stand for something. That's why I found it hilarious that this article happened to come out at this time. I am not stupid enough to believe that it doesn't correlate with what's been going on with the whole Sweet Baby Ink thing and people attacking gamers. Yep, so rest assured, as long as you're not completely sedentary and you're still being active and working out and eating well, your dick isn't gonna fall off. I think you'll be fine.